So welcome to this uh, introductory webinar, which is introducing us to the concepts that we are preparing for, for our training workshop in on preparation and reporting of results of national JG inventories under the enhanced transparency framework of the Paris Agreement. Uh, the training will take place in Chigali from 25th to 27th June. That is next week. I hope everyone is already with the, the requirements uh, to, to, to get ready to travel to Chigali. So I would like to now take this moment to introduce you the program for this uh, webinar. It's a short webinar, but it's very important for us uh, to be able to have this introductory session and um, it will help us to prepare uh, for, the, for the in-country training, for the hands-on training that we shall have in Chigali. So the program today runs uh, like this. We shall have um, an open uh, welcome remarks that I've already provided. And then we shall have a Mentimeter to just break the ice and set the stage uh, from Rebecca. And then we shall also have an explanation of how the approach, uh, the, the approach to the training, and of course, uh, with some details on the objectives and the content and the format of the training. And then we shall have uh, uh, the first presentation on the requirements, uh, new requirements for reporting of inventories under the enhanced transparency framework. And then our next presentation will uh, be highlighting the contents of the common reporting tables, the abridged version, and then introduction to new uh, UNFCC tools available for reporting inventories. Uh, we shall have, of course, after each of those presentations, we shall be having question and answer sessions. Uh, but we shall then have the last presentation, which will be about introducing uh, the different stages in terms of the data needs for the stage one and stage two of the workshop as we prepare for the hands-on training in Chigali. So uh, later we shall have a survey menti, but we shall also have closing remarks and guidance on, on the next steps uh, as we prepare for the in-country or hands-on training in Chigali. So at this moment, I would like to introduce uh, Rebecca from PATPA, my colleague who will be running a mentee as the first part of our session. Uh, Rebecca, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheila, and good morning, everybody from my side. I hope you can hear me. So my name is Rebecca Ackerman, and I coordinate the Anglophone African Regional Group for the Partnership on Transparency in the Paris Agreement. I think some of you have met me, some of you have not, because this is the first time that I do the regional workshop um, as the position was held by Katarina Tarpo before. So to get us a little bit started, and as Sheila said, um, to set the vibe, I prepared a little Mentimeter and I'll be sharing my screen and I kindly ask you to um, uh, open Mentimeter on your um, phones and um, Put in the code 81563807. And the first question that I'd like to ask you is, where are you joining us from today? And how many kilometers is it away from Kigali? So I've already put my own answer. I'm joining from France, from Paris, and it's about 9,000 kilometers away. So please uh, put in the code 8156. 3807. And I'd be curious to know where are you joining us from today and how far is it away from Kigali? So for those who've just joined us, maybe once again, uh, we're starting off with a little Menti and you can join by going on menti.com and putting in the code 
And the first question to get us started is, where are you joining us from today and how many kilometers is it away from Kigali? So maybe you could look it up real quick and see is it how far is it actually away from where you'll be going next week? Oh, I see someone is joining us from Bonn, and it's about 10,000 kilometers. Someone else is joining us from the EUS, which is even more. It's 11,625. From South Sudan, Juba, about 1,000. From Pretoria, and it's 2,600 kilometers. From Uganda, 340. From Nigeria, Thank you for those responses already. I'll give you another few seconds for those who didn't have the chance yet, if you'd still like to respond to the question. From Kenya, thank you. So thank you for all your responses. We have the closest person joining from Uganda with 340 kilometers. I think it's Sheila. <laughs> and we have the furthest person joining from the US with over 11,000 uh, kilometers. And we have some more comments coming in. So we have Zambia with about 2,138 kilometers and Harare with 1,780. So you can see we have people joining from all over. Um, and thank you very much for responding to that first question. So we move on to the second question, which is what expertise do you bring with you? So in preparation for the workshop, what is your expertise? What do you specialize in? Yeah, I still have someone responding to the first question. So there's someone from Mauritius as well joining um, away three, which is 3,616 kilometers away from Kigali. Thank you for that. Okay, so we have some expertise coming in. So we have someone who is a GHG inventory compiler. We have someone who is an expert in the ETF reporting tools. Um, some more GHG inventories and MRV, GHG inventories, and especially the compilation of the waste sector. Thank you for that. We have someone joining from SEMA in Zambia and who's part um, as well of the GHG inventory um, and in particular the waste sector. We have a GHG inventory, the agricultural sectoral expert. Um, we have an environmental engineer who's also in compilation of waste. Um, we have someone with expertise on the MPGs for the ETF compilation of the inventory, the IPCC software, very important, as well as energy. Thank you for those responses. So I think we have um, a lot of GHG inventory compilers here, but also a lot of um, diverse expertise. So moving on to the last question, um, as this is your training and your workshop, we'd like to know from you, what would you like to learn more about in Kigali?
Okay, we have the first responses coming in. So we have time series, the CRT tables, the ETF tables. Mm -hmm. And some very specific uh, needs as well, the internationally accepted techniques to interpolarate and extrapolate data gaps, recalculations, overall GHG inventory compilation, transparency reporting and integrating the IPCC software with the CRT tables, CRT CTF tables, time consistency, uh, time series consistency. I'll give you another moment in case you have not responded. CRT tables for the ETF, the MPGs. Okay, thank you very much for those um, responses. And I think you can rest assured that we have covered these things uh, in the agenda and we'll definitely be covering them. So thank you very much for those responses. Um, and I think with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And thank you very much for participating in the Mentee. That was our uh, very first start to get to know who is in the room, who is the group that's coming, what are the expertise that we have around, um, and what do we expect from Kigali. And with that, I hand back over to the moderator, Sheila. Yeah, thank you so much, Becky, for that session. It was really a very ice breaking and getting us to the same level, knowing who is in the room. Thank you so much. So uh, at this moment, I would like to welcome Kesiwe Kumalo to give us the introductory session on the approaches on how we shall be handling the training. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Kesiwe uh, to deliver that session on the approach and the objective of the training. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Good morning, everyone. I'm trying to share my screen in a moment. I hope you are able to see my screen yes we can see your screen so thank you very much uh, sheila and uh, good morning everyone and welcome to uh, this webinar in preparation for the in-person training on preparation and reporting of results of national ghg inventories under the etf of the paris agreement uh, it is my pleasure to be with you this morning and um, also to engage with you in one of our regional uh, training series that we have normally under the CBGSP in partnership um, with the PADPA. And we have uh, been doing this uh, regional training since last year. And uh, last year we focused on NDC tracking and the focus of this year is on the national GSG inventories, as we know that um, countries are actually preparing their first BTR under the ETF with a deadline for December this year. So the content of my presentation is basically to introduce you to how um, are we going to get to Kigali and what are the expectations from this webinar and also for the training in Kigali. So as uh, I have already mentioned, um, the training is um, being co-organized uh, by the CBGSP uh, together with PADPA and in collaboration with the UNFCCC. And this training is also hosted by the government of Rwanda. And we are very grateful for that um, to the government. Is my slide moving, Sheila? No, your slides are not moving. You might need to reshare or to put in the presentation mode. Are we not in presentation mode? Uh, but it's in a different mode. Uh, yeah, that one. Uh, from my side, it's uh, on presentation mode. I don't know what's... Um... Okay, the slides now are moving. Okay. Now you see that. You see that. 
you can see my presentation yes okay the main objective uh, basically for this training is to support uh, country teams that are in charge of reporting the national GAG inventory in improving the technical contents of the nir and the btr uh, guided by the mpgs and the ipcc uh, 2006 guidelines as uh, drawn by um, from the decisions that uh, have been made under the UNFCCC in guiding parties to prepare the national inventory report and the BTR. So in this training, we are very happy. I have seen um, in, in the Mentimeter that we have quite a lot of experienced GSG inventory compilers and sector compilers. So this training is basically for you in terms of how um, you can use the guidance from the MPGs and also from the IPCC guidelines to improve the technical contents of the National Inventory Report. So this training is also meant to provide um, concrete uh, preparations uh, for you in terms of how um, you prepare the inventory. And also it's going to be a platform uh, for exchange of experiences and lesson learned in the application of different GSG inventory tools and systems in the country. And also uh, to identify collectively the common challenges and opportunities. And we are going to use this workshop to also help you how you can actually uh, move around the different challenges that um, you have in compiling your national GSG inventory. And we are hoping that this will uh, actually foster South-South cooperation among the different countries as we have already initiated this in different platforms uh, under the CBIT uh, GSP. So the training um, approach is in four stages. Uh, the first stage uh, which is basically the webinar that we are having today, where we are going to introduce um, common uh, simple elements, where we are introducing what are the new uh, reporting requirements under the ETF, and also taking you through uh, the CRT, what they are, and so that you can understand how they look like. And um, then the next stage uh, basically will be uh, for you to collect uh, some data and information which is going to be very necessary for you to bring into the in-person training in Gigali because we are going to use this um, information to actually help you improve um, your reporting on the GSG inventory. And I want to emphasize that this is the most important element because we want the training to be tailor-made for your different situation in the different countries. So it would be very important for you to really um, uh, take a look at the next important things that or information that you have to bring to Gigali, which we are going to uh, present in the last uh, presentation of this webinar. And then the third stage is the in-person training, which will happen in Gigali. And uh, we are going to ensure that this training is uh, very hands-on. We have a lot of exercises and experience uh, exchange uh, platform uh, that we are going to have throughout the training to facilitate um, uh, exchange of information and also some good practices that our countries are doing in their different countries. And then the last stage is the fourth stage, I think, which um, after the training, we expect that there's going to be some follow up uh, in terms of um, how we can support you um, as you compile your GSG inventory. I want to emphasize that stage four basically is on you uh, reaching out to us to say this is where I am and uh, you want clarity or you want support in different elements in, in terms of how you are compiling your inventory or your PTR process. And also just to remind you under the CBIT GSP, we also offer um, review of the documents that you will be producing, be it the national inventory um, document or the BTR before you submit to the UNFCCC. So this stage is really require countries to be proactive for us to, to actually have or to see results in this case. And so the objective of this webinar today is uh, basically to introduce you to the main concepts and provisions for GAG inventory preparation and reporting tools and give you guidance um, in terms of what will happen in the next stages of the training. And we are going to um, 
look today through this webinar the new requirements for reporting under the ETF and we are also going to um, have a sneak peek on the common reporting tables, try to demystify what they are and what kind of information is supposed to be in these reporting um, uh, tables. And then um, we are going to also introduce you to the UNFCCC reporting tools. Um, and then you are going to get instructions for the follow up stages. And as I have mentioned, this will be very important and it is on you as participants to ensure that you bring the information that is required for the next stage. So the in country data collection basically um, it's a very critical stage and um, it's very important uh, for the success of the in-person training as most of the exercises that we create are actually uh, based on the information that you would have collected and submitted before the in-person training and this is also um, gives a good guidance in terms of um, uh, helping you to actually familiarize yourself with the National Inventory Report and the different uh, templates that are necessary to fill and support you in your compilation of your inventory. And then the objective of the in-person uh, training, uh, as I've already mentioned, is to equip you with the knowledge and tools that are necessary for the preparation of the National Inventory Documents using your own data and identify solutions and challenge around the challenges that you might have. And with that, we are <laughs> going to um, look close in some of the key um, new requirements of the MPGs. And we are going to focus on this specifically understanding that most of the requirements now are a mandatory for developing countries and in the previous reporting phase under the convention, most of these were not mandatory. And we are also going to get um, a close look on the applicability of flexibility provisions under the MPGs and also guide you in terms of how you can apply the different flexibility provisions. And we are also going to have some hands-on experience and understanding of how we can organize ourselves at national level to develop GHG um, inventory tools from work plans, improvement plans, data management systems, QA, QC procedures and plans. And these are very important uh, tools to support the sustainability of your inventory process. And we are also going to get um, a, a live demonstration of the UNFCCC reporting tools and have um, a, a good time uh, with the hands-on um, experience around using the tools, how we can actually input information to the tools to actually get the CTR tables that are part of the submission for the GSG inventory. And of course, as I've mentioned, there will be quite some uh, useful practical exercises and sharing of experience um, in Gigali. So please uh, come prepared for this. And as mentioned, there will be a follow up and I've already highlighted that this uh, follow up is on you and requires you to be very proactive as you prepare your national inventory after the training if there's something that was not clear or if there's something where you need more information or you need support on you need us to review or help you with something please do reach out this is a very critical um, uh, stage uh, for the training because it actually helps you step by step and ensure that you submit your national inventory report or your first BTR report by the deadline. So it is very important that you really do take the initiative to follow up and um, uh, and reach out uh, either to PACPA or CBGSP and we are ready to support you wherever possible. So with that, uh, thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, this is how our training will go in terms of the different stages, their objective and the expectations. So we are really looking forward to interacting with the participants beyond this webinar and also to see everyone in Kigali. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Kesiwe, for that detailed um, introduction and also elaborating on the different stages in the approach that we are going to use during our training. So 
Uh, if we do not have any questions or comments for clarification, I would like to uh, introduce our next uh, speaker who will be presenting about the new requirements for the reporting of inventories under the ETF from uh, BUR and uh, National Communications Hello. and then to BTR to and the National out. Inventory Report. So I'll now well, take uh, this opportunity to hand over the microphone to Fernando. Fernando. Thank you. Am I care, Casper? Now? All right. Fernando, we cannot hear you. Yeah, Fernando, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. You are muted. Uh, and how about now? Yeah, there is some feedback. We can hear, but yeah. there is some feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see my presentation? Can you see my presentation? We can see the presentation, but there is feedback. From your side, and, and how about now? It is bet. It is now fine. It's fine now. We can hear you very well. It's now fine. Ah, super, super. And regarding the the presentation, is uh, uh, okay? The presentation is very yeah. fine. Okay. So I uh, I hope now uh, both my uh, screen and voice are are okay. And I will start my presentation first uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Fernando Farias. I am from Chile and I will be part of the team of trainers in Kigali. So, so looking forward to, to meet you there. And um, regarding the, the topic of the GAG inventories, we all know uh, how important uh, are the GAG inventories for complying with the Paris Agreement. If we have a good uh, national GAG inventory, we will know uh, what we have uh, reached in terms of GAG emissions, but we will also have a very good basis for projecting how we are hoping to, to be in the future in terms of our country GAG emissions. But in terms of reporting, there are uh, new requirements and additional information uh, as agreed by the parties of the Paris Agreement. And, and as such, uh, we must provide uh, information uh, in a range of topics. Um, I would say that mostly for NDC tracking, but in the case of a uh, national GAG uh, inventories, what uh, the agreement was uh, countries should provide a national inventory report comprised of a national inventory document plus these uh, common reporting tables which is uh, something new or, or relatively new for countries uh, like ours uh, it means uh, developing countries um, in this training, you will have the opportunity uh, to test the last re reporting software by UNFCCC. So uh, some of you commented that was one of your main expectations to, to become familiar with this software. So on day three of the training, we have nearly uh, uh, the whole day three, I would say, to, to know more about the IPCC software, but mostly the UNFCCC reporting software. We will also, uh, since we will count with colleagues from UNFCCC, 
to to check the inter uh, the use and the connection of both information because uh, while the IPCC uh, software provides the emissions, the UNFCCC software provides the platform to report correctly these emissions, okay? We will also have, uh, during the training, uh, the opportunity to become familiar with flexibility provisions related with national GAG inventories. Uh, in the case of uh, flexibility provisions, uh, the MPGs define the number of flexibility provisions. I will say that is uh, the list is longer than in other cases. And we will check what are the opportunities that uh, uh, we are opening with these flexibility provisions. And, to, and, and I think that is very important that we had in the previous uh, trainings, the opportunity to know from other countries what they are thinking on flexibility provisions. Uh, some countries mention that they want to use flexibility provisions. Others say that uh, they don't want to use flexibility provisions. So I think that we will have a very rich discussion in Kigali on bene benefits and, and, and other consequences of, of applying flexibility provisions from the real uh, implementers. No. And also, uh, I, I will say that in, in Kigali, we'll have the opportunity to uh, work with other elements. Uh, we have uh, already proved prov useful in the two previous trainings we have conducted uh, in the last months, uh, as uh, it was uh, shown in the Menti uh, presented by Rebecca. Uh, Several of you uh, were very interested in working in time series, working in uh, how to uh, uh, work with um, with metrics, or or how to deal in the case you don't have enough data. I think this is a critical topic, and we will have uh, particular sessions dealing with the issue of uh, uh, what happens if we don't have the full data set. We will also have the uh, opportunity to to start for you to start organizing your first uh, national inventory document. We will check uh, specific chapters uh, and information that can be useful for your uh, specific sectorial chapters, uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, for the cases of the energy and the LULUCF chapter that we know that are uh, particularly uh, important for uh, your future reporting. And as I, as I mentioned uh, before, the idea uh, is that you get familiar with the common, uh, common reporting tables uh, and the software. So uh, we will have the opportunity for uh, to, to to for you to to know what is inside uh, of the common reporting tables and don't use it as a black box, but to understand what are the elements that are inside, but also to have a practical session of several hours with the software uh, guided by our colleagues from UNFCCC uh, that uh, are conducting similar uh, trainings uh, around the world and, uh, and know very well how the, the software works. So I would say that uh, in summary, we expect uh, you bring, uh, as uh, Ketsiwe mentioned, info from your country, but uh, importantly uh, that you take back to your country, more information and more ideas and more concepts that can be applied successfully for your uh, reporting of uh, your first BTR. Thank you very much. And I, I will stop sharing. And giving it back to you, Sheila. Yeah, thank you so much, Fernando, for that presentation. Uh, we shall maybe keep the comments, but if you have a burning comment, kindly put it in the chat. Uh, but I'll request Kesiwe to give us the next presentation on contents of common reporting table. 
uh, the abridged version so that after that presentation, then we can have maybe a question and answer discussion for a few minutes. So Kesiwe, kindly take the microphone. Thank you, Sheila. Um, I will uh, share my screen. I hope you can see uh, my screen now. Yes. So, Thank you very much. So the purpose of my presentation is um, basically to give you participants um, the content of the common reporting tables. As my colleague um, Fernando has just mentioned that it's very important for us to understand how these uh, common reporting tables look like um, and what kind of information uh, goes in there so that we don't um, use them as a black box. And also to mention that um, as a caveat that we know that this uh, common reporting tables will be produced uh, by the reporting tool but it's very important for us to first understand the structure of these tables and the information that goes in the table so just to mention my my presentation is not moving again. Is my presentation moving? No. It is not moving. It has no. Moved. No, it's moved. Ah, okay, thank you, uh, Sheila. I think uh, we know that um, the CRTs have been introduced and they are part of um, the guidance uh, on how countries are expected to report on their national inventory report, uh, as per decision 18 CMA1, which is uh, basically the MPGs. And um, this was operationalized in, in Glasgow through decision 5 CMA3, where these tables were agreed in terms of structure and the information that is required to be in these um, uh, tables. So Fernando has mentioned that it's very important for us to understand that um, as part of our reporting, we are expected to um, report on the National Inventory Report, which is the NIR. And um, as per the guidelines, uh, the NIR consists of the National Inventory Document, very important and also the common reporting tables which means that um, based on the mpgs uh, your submission is not complete if you submit the national inventory document without uh, the crts so the crts are very um, important so what is the difference in the national inventory document basically countries put in the narrative and description information on the GHG inventory, which is what we, we know we have been doing in terms of, um, uh, of describing uh, what uh, processes, what data, emission factors that we are using and all um, the information that we have normally been including in our national inventory report. But the common reporting tables uh, basically contain contains the quantitative information that is necessary um, for consistency, transparency, and comparability of your inventory. And so what are these CRTs? So the CRTs are basically standardized uh, sets of reporting tables that all parties must submit under the reporting requirements of the MPGs as guided by the MPGs and also the operational guidelines of the MPGs. And basically the CRTs, they are building on what Annex 1 parties have been using to report their annual GAG inventories, which is the common reporting format tables. And um, the key uh, characteristics 
of these tables is basically commonality to basically uh, bring in consistency and uh, transparency and comparability of your GHG inventory. So the tables provide uh, basically consistent data at both uh, international and national levels and enhance transparency and also facilitate comparison among or across countries. And uh, these are basically reflect the guidelines of the two, 2006 IPCC and uh, make sure that all the categories, definitions are consistent across the different parties that are reporting their inventory. So the CRTs um, contains reported figures, as already mentioned, while the NID contains the full description of the data, methods, assumptions, and sources of information, etc. So the CRTs are basically MX, uh, Microsoft Excel workbooks containing 60 worksheets for each reported year. Uh, for example, it means for 2000 and, uh, for this 2024 submission for your first um, BTR, you are going to have 32 years of 1992, of 1990 to 2020, depending on what is your base year. And uh, so you have to take that into um, uh, consideration that you will have all these uh, 60 worksheet for each year. And these uh, tables are divided into three types um, for each year. We have the sectoral background tables, which are orange in color, which are color coded orange, and also the sectoral reporting tables, which are green, and also the summary and cross sectoral tables, which have blue cells. So if you look at the different uh, colors, you can actually tell the different types in terms of which level of these tables uh, fall between. So the sectoral background tables are the most um, uh, data intense uh, tables where you include all the background information and the tables um, disaggregate this information into sectors and then also produce summaries. This is basically what it means from sectoral background tables uh, to sectoral tables and summary tables. So, and um, these are prepared for the electronic reporting of information in the National Inventory Report as per the guidelines that these CRTs um, have to be submitted electronically through the UNFCCC reporting tool so you don't have uh, necessarily have to uh, download this table and annex them in your NIR, so you can submit them electronically through the reporting tool. And the CRT also contains data for all sectors and categories as defined in the MPGs and also following um, the categorization in the 2006 IPCC guidelines. And as per the guidelines, parties um, also are free to add on country-specific categories to the CRTs. And we are going to see this in practice in Kigali, how you can actually do this. So these tables are basically aggregated into three levels, as I've already mentioned. And um, we see uh, that the information in level three is where most of the information you have to include. It aggregates all this information that you include in terms of um, the activity data for each different sector, as you can see, under energy, IPPU, agriculture, little CF, and waste. And once you input all this information with your emission factors, then it aggregates this to level two, which is uh, the sectoral tables in green. And this also aggregated upwards to summary tables. So you get full um, detailed information under the background uh, tables. And then as you move up um, in the different levels, uh, you get uh, summaries of each of the information uh, from the subcategories or categories to sectors, from sectors to summary tables that gives a holistic picture in terms of the trends 
and the different summaries um, that um, the inventory uh, is about. So as you can see uh, here, I've already mentioned in terms of the color coding, you see the sectoral background tables, you see uh, the sectoral reporting tables and how the summary uh, tables look like. So I'm going to zoom a little bit in each of these, just using an example so that you can see what kind of information. I may not be able to show all the tables, but I trust that you will also play around to see um, these tables in terms of how the information is um, loaded. What is very important um, to note is that when you look at the tables uh, from this table, you see that there are colors in the sectoral background tables. For instance, you see orange and you see white and you see also some gray cells. And what does this mean? It means in the color shaded cells, uh, basically is completed by the software. So this is automatically um, calculated by um, the reporting tool and all unshaded um, cells this is where um, basically you will feed in the data or the figure or the standard notation key, whatever the case may be. And then the gray shaded cells basically means the information is not expected to be applicable or available for that particular cell. So when you look at um, the structure of the tables, you know that in the white cells, this is where you input information in the color coded cells, this information is going to be automatically calculated and the gray cells, you don't have to include any information. So the sectoral background tables um, look like this. Basically, this is where uh, most of the data is going to be filled. So it required detailed information on emissions and removal activity data and other relevant information at a category and subcategory levels. So some of these tables, as you know, uh, it can be very long because it takes the different um, categories and in, into subcategories, and this is where you input most of the data. As you can see, you have here um, in the red squares activity data, and as I mentioned, this table is actually uh, very short. It can actually be very long. This is the uh, sectoral background data for industrial processes and product use. It's just an example and all the different sectors have these different background tables. And here you've got the emission factor that you will use and then on the other side the emissions and um, recovery and, and capture base depending on which sector you are working on. So you will see um, this table requiring to put different information. And then once you input this information is aggregated to level two, which is um, the sectoral level. And um, this uh, gives you um, a, a, a one table for each sector where you see for energy, what are the emissions for IPPU, agriculture, LULUCF and waste. So it is summarizing all the different um, categories that you would have included in your back sectoral background table into a sector level emissions. And the emissions are reported as usual, as we know, in a mass basis and also uh, a total CO2 equivalent basis. And this is how the sectoral uh, reporting table may look like. Um, as you can see, it, it is already you, here. You don't already see the subcategories. It's giving you already um, the different um, uh, key category in each um, level B. As you know, uh, 5A, 5B, 5C, and so forth. So this is also um, a screenshot of the table, which is um, may not uh, look uh, complete. And then once you have that, once the, the information has been aggregated to level two, so um, the software further sub -ag aggregate to level one and produce summary reports or summary tables uh, for you. So you have summary one, which actually is the summary for the national greenhouse gas inventory and uh, summary two, which gives you uh, this in CO2 equivalent 
and a summary report for methods, emission factors used. So you would have included this in your sectoral background table. And here it will produce, uh, for example, table three will produce one table as a summary of what methods or emission factors that have been used in the inventory. And then we have uh, table six to 10, which we call cross-cutting tables. And we are going to see what are the content um, of these tables. This is table one. Uh, basically, uh, most of you are very familiar with this table, and this is the table that we had always used or annexed in our GHG inventory. That gives a summary of the GHG inventory, and this gives you a summary in CO2 equivalent. This is um, a summary two. Uh, which also include um, uh, totals with or without LULUCF. And uh, you can also see, um, this is uh, also just to mention that I screenshot just for you to see in terms of what um, information is there. So these are the ones that include the memo items and the indirect CO2 and N2O, which is not from uh, agriculture and land use. So it is very important uh, just to look at the table and be familiar on how they look like. And then uh, we have uh, cross cutting tables, as I've mentioned from table six, we have indirect emissions of N2O and CO2. And then table seven is a key category table. Um, and table eight is a table on recalculations. If you have recalculated your inventory and in this table, this is where you show um, uh, the difference in terms of what when the last calculation was used, the new calculation and what is the difference. And um, table nine uh, shows information on completeness and information on notation keys. And table 10 is the summary of emission trends over the entire time series. And just to mention here that this is um, the only table that is not going to be yearly because this gives you an overall summary, for example, on the trends um, of uh, your emissions. And then we have uh, the flexibility table, which actually summarizes or brings, uh, gives a summary of how you have used flexibility provisions. And we can see like how this information is included. So we are going to look at that in detail in Gigali and also look at the reporting tool, how this information is. So this is just a look and feel of table six, and this is a look and feel of um, table seven. Uh, those of you that have already been involved in um, uh, and, and in GAG inventory and have calculated key category analysis, you can actually see this. And it's also uh, showing you in terms of um, the different um, options that you may have for flexibility in key category, as Fernando mentioned that uh, you have flexibility on a key category. And this is table eight, recalculation, how it may look like. Um, so you will see one column on the previous submission and the latest submission and what is the difference and the impact of the recalculation on emissions with or without LULUCF. And this is table eight. Um, again, I think in the end on the summary of, um, gives you the summary of um, uh, the emission in CO2 equivalent of your last submission and latest submission. So here, this is like a completeness of information in terms of where you have used notation key, which uh, guesses were estimated at what, in which sector and what was not ex estimated and with explanation, whether it was a capacity issue or there's uh, issues on data availability. And this is um, the table 10 on emission trends. This is how it might um, look like. And this is the summary table uh, on flexibility, where you mention the flexibility provision, the year of your inventory, the sector category guess, and where you describe the, how you have applied um, flexibility and clarify on what capacity constraints you had for you to apply the flexibility, the time frame as guided by the MPGs. And just to mention that, um, as you know, as you can see, I think you what is very important is that the CRT, and you are going to also see in the software that these provide these provisions of uh, guidance through footnotes, 
and also documentation boxes with where you can provide background information and relevant references to the national inventory document. So these um, uh, tables should uh, be linked and be related to the information that you have to provide um, in your NID. So you have to make sure that this is consistent. You cannot mention in the NID that you didn't estimate and then you come to the table and say you have estimated. So it's very important um, uh, to have also this. And also if you need to explain and you cannot, you don't have, for example, the space to, to include all this explanation in the table. So you can reference where you have explained this in the NID, for example, where you have used um, your own emission factor, uh, maybe there is a study guiding you to do that and you, you cannot include all this information on the tables. So you can link um, here in the documentation box and where this information is in the NID. So this provide actually the linkages in terms of what you have in the in, uh, national inventory document and also um, linking this information with the CRT because basically you are presenting the same information but in a different format. So what is also very important to note is that um, you can also apply flexibility on the tables uh, and use uh, new notation keys. I'm not going to go into details uh, because we are going to see this uh, how it's going to be done in the software. Uh, in the tool um, uh, and you can also collapse relevant roles and columns as per the MPGs and uh, where some of the additional guesses maybe they are not occurring in your country you can collapse uh, the tables as necessary uh, we are going to have an, an um, hands-on exercise on how this can be done in practical terms what is very important, as I mentioned, um, is that as much as we are presenting to you the CRT tables for you to understand how they look like, what information it carries, it's very important um, to understand that um, these CRTs will be prepared using the reporting tool, which is developed by the UNFCCC. And also very important to know that uh, these CRTs are not a GSG inventory estimation tool, but they are helping you to actually display or report the information that you have already estimated. And also it's very important that the tables in which parties report their already existing GSG emission and uh, removals and related information. So it's basically for help you report or help you standardize the information that you will already um, estimated and already included in your national inventory document and help you to standardize that. And the UNFCCC GAG inventory reporting tool will help you to generate the CRTs. But it's very important to understand the structure, what kind of information the CRTs um, is going to have so that um, you are not just working from um, a black box that you may think how this um, may look like. So very important. Uh, I think we're going to also mention this, that you use either the IPCC uh, software to estimate your emissions because um, the IPCC and UFCCC have worked on the interoperability of these uh, tools and it makes it easy for you to generate the CRTs. And we are going to also see this in practice in the training in Kigali. So once you have estimated using the IPCC software or whatever tool that you have at national level, uh, then you have to generate the CRTs and then you can submit um, online. So this is how the process will flow. So um, I thank you very much. And I think after this presentation, we are going to hear uh, more from my colleague from UNFCCC uh, in terms of how this work in practice and then more details will be uh, in Gigali. So thank you very much, Sheila. Over. Yeah, thank you so much for that detailed uh, presentation. I hope uh, participants are warming up for what data they need to prepare as they prepare for that training. 
So I hope more details will be coming. So I don't want to take much of the time, but I would like to request if there are participants who need any clarification or who have any questions, this is an opportunity uh, to ask those questions. So I will just take a few minutes to give that opportunity uh, for our questions. And if we do not have, of course, then we shall go to the next session. Uh, but uh, in case you don't want to put up your hand, you can also type uh, the questions in the chat. Any questions? Okay, I hope we are moving together. So maybe uh, I take this opportunity to introduce our colleague from the UNFCC who will be taking us through introduction to new UNFCC uh, tools available for reporting on inventories. So uh, the microphone is open for you and Ashif, uh, kindly take the floor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sheila, and good afternoon. I think it's exactly 12 noon in Bonn. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Nasib Kafli, and I work in the UNFCC Secretariat, and I am responsible for the development of the ETF reporting tool for the GAG inventories. So for the next 20 minutes, I'll be giving you a brief introduction to the GAG inventory reporting tool and quickly show you how the tool works. And then next week when we meet in Kigali, then we'll be doing the exercises together in the tool and we'll help you in getting familiar with the tool and also help you in how to compile your GAG inventory in the ETF reporting tool for submission to the UNFCC. So before we go to the demo, I have a few slides. Some of those might already be a repetition for you, but it is always good to have a kind of a, a quick recap. So I hope you are able to see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, yep. Ashish. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, Katsuya. So, so today I'll briefly uh, talk about the mandate for the ETF reporting tools. I'll briefly touch upon the common reporting tables, which I think we already had a good presentation on the structure of the common reporting tools. I'll just do a quick recap, and then I'll do a how does the inventory workflow, uh, how does the UNFCC reporting tool, IPC software, your national system, uh, communicate with each other and how the uh, reporting tables are generated for submission to UNFCC. And then I'll do a quick demo of five, 10 minutes to show you how the ETF GAG inventory reporting tool would look like. And then towards the end of my presentation, I'll also share some useful resources that you may wish to review before the training next week so that it would help you to get familiar with the, with the training that we'll have next week. So a brief overview of the mandate to develop the ETF reporting tools. So the in the decision 18 CMA1, which is the modalities, procedure, and guidelines for the uh, enhanced transparency framework, requested the substaff to, uh, to develop the common reporting tables. And those common reporting tables were adopted in Glasgow in decision 5 CMA3 for the GAG inventories for tracking progress in the NDCs and for tracking tracking the FTC support. And the same decision also requested the Secretariat to develop the reporting tools, taking into account the flexibility provisions. MPGs have embedded the flexibility provisions for the developing countries who need it in, the, in light of the national capacities. And then requested the Secretariat to make the test version available by June 2023, and then the final version of the tools by June 2024 and then also organize a regular technical training workshop, which UNFC Secretariat has been doing since we released the first test version. And then it also requested the to facilitate the interoperability with the IPCC software. Many parties are using the IPCC software to estimate their uh, national GHG emissions. And then we have been working collaboratively with the IPCC software to facilitate the interoperability between the IPCC software and the ETF you know, GAG inventory reporting tool so that the 
GAG inventory that you have estimated in using the IPC software can be transferred to the GAG inventory reporting tools for reporting to UNFCC. So uh, in the training next week, we'll have an exercise on the interoperability so that we can transfer. You can see how we transfer the data from the IPC software to the ETF reporting tools. And in the next slide, I have a timelines of how we have freezed here. So we released a first a release of the test version in 15th of August last year. And since then, we have two more um, releases of the test version. One was in November before the COP, and the third one was in April, uh, April this year. And in between those re releases, we have been providing the trainings to the parties, and there were uh, extensive training during the, during the COP in Dubai. So some of you may have also participated in that training. And then now we are working on the final final version of the tool that is due to be released on the 30th of June as per the mandate. And in the training next week, we'll be working on the, on the tool so that you are already ready when the final version of the tool is, is released so that you can already start working on, your G, on compiling your GAG inventory. Uh, this slide uh, may be a repetition. The next two, three slides would be a kind of a repetition of what uh, Ketsi were presented, but I just wanted to give you in context. So the Article 13 of the Paris Agreement <clears throat> says that its party shall provide a national inventory report, and that national inventory report consists of the national inventory document, which is a textual document, and a common reporting tables, which are a set of Excel Excel work file. And then the decision 5 CMA3 in Glasgow adopted the format of the common reporting tables. And the common reporting tables are a set of the Excel workbooks. So there are around 60 worksheets for each reported year. So if you are reporting the GHG inventory for the year 1990, then it will have 60 worksheets organized in these three sets of colors. The orange colors where you are the sectoral background tables where you enter the data. These data are then summarized to the green tables, which are the sectoral report tables. And these information from these green tables are further organized or summarized in the summary and cross-cutting tables. So the tools help you to generate these Excel worksheets. So you just enter the data on the sectoral background tables and the tools helps you to generate all of these tables in this colored format and then also do the calculation for you to arrive at the national total and other various uh, various summaries and the trends for your GAG inventory. And in this slide, I'm just briefly touching upon the relationship between the IPCC inventory software, the UNFCC inventory reporting tool and the, the common reporting tables. So in the in the middle, you would see that the reporting tools is the GAG inventory reporting tool. So this is where you, you provide the information for your GAG inventories. And for reporting this uh, GAG inventory information, you have to estimate the GAG inventory, GAG emissions first. And that GAG emissions estimation can be done using the IPCC inventory software. Or if you have developed your own national system, so you can also estimate your GAG emissions within your national system. And then if you have estimated your estimation, then you can transfer the data from your from the IPCC inventory software to the ETF reporting tools through the JSON, JSON file format. So IPCC inventory software would generate a JSON file that you can import it to the GAG inventory reporting tools so that all of your estimation that you have done in the IPC software would be transferred to the ETF GAG inventory reporting tools. Or if you have your own national system to do the estimation of the GAG emissions, then you can also transfer the data to the GAG inventory reporting tools through Excel. So you can work, you can transfer the data using Excel or through the JSON or you can also directly input the data from your national in, national 
system to the uh, GSG inventory reporting tool. And then the GSG inventory reporting tools would help you to generate the common reporting tables, the set of those orange, green, and blue Excel workbooks. And these Excel workbooks are generated for each year. So you can see here there are, there are multiple sheet, meaning that each set would be generated for each reporting year. And then this GSG inventory information would also be compiled into a, a JSON file for your archiving also and for the UNFCC to use it further in the other reports and for, for supporting the review process. So this is how the GAG, typical GAG inventory workflow would, uh, would look like. And in this slide, I am just providing a brief background of the background and objectives that what we'll be doing next week. So the next week, the training session would be on the ETF GAG inventory reporting tools for, for the common reporting tables for the GAG inventories. And that training session would be a hands-on training exercise session to provide a practical experience for the using the tool and also showing you the features of the tools. So we recommend you to bring your laptop so that you can actively participate on the hands-on training. Uh, and then you can also bring your, your emissions data or, or the forms, I think that's there will be a presentation later on how to compile those information. And if you bring those, we can work together in the training sessions next week to, to help you uh, to compile the information. And then at the end of the training session next week, the participant would be able to access the ETF reporting tools, get familiar with it, with it, and then see the different features of the ETF reporting tools, how to apply the flexibility in the ETF reporting tools, and then also work with Excel, JSON, and then also we'll work with the work on generating the common reporting tables for submission to UNFCC, and then also work with JSON and, and touch upon the interoperability with the IPC software. So that would be our objective next week to when we meet in person in Kigali. And I think this is my last slide. So. I think this presentation would be shared with you after this webinar. So here in this slide, I have provided the links to some of the useful resources that you can get familiar prior to the training workshop. So it has the ETF reference manual, the handbook, and then it also has the format of the common reporting tables, MPGs, and then also some IPCC resources on the IPCC guidelines and also the link to the latest version of the IPCC software. So these are the resources that may help you to prepare for the training next week. And then now I'll switch on to the live demo, which for which I'll move out of the presentation. So uh, let me again quickly arrange my screen to, to log into the tool. So I hope you are again able to see my the other screen uh, with that with the tool, the ETF uh, GAG inventory reporting tools. So yes, we can see it. yeah, thank you. So this is the ETF GAG inventory reporting tool, and this tool is to be used by the authorized user from dominated by the national focal point within the country. So you need to have an account to access to this inventory reporting tools even though this is an online tool that you can see there's a online online feature but you can also work on this tool offline so which i think many parties would 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 want to work it work work on the tool offline also so in the training next week i'll show you how you can also work offline so there are different ways of working offline directly in the application or using an excel file so that i'll also show show it to you next week and once you log into the application, so this is the window that you will see where you can create a blank inventory. So you can start creating a blank inventory if you are working for the first time, or you can also import a file from the IPC software to start your inventory. So I will not go through all of the features now. I'll just quickly walk you through the through the different aspects of this tool so that you have an overview of how the tools looks like. And then next week we'll have seven or eight exercises that will work together uh, to get familiar 
and then each of each of the participant will be logging into this tool and then working on the exercise together. So we'll have ample amount of time to to practice the exercises that would help you to get familiar with the tool. So this is the page where you create the inventory. So once you create the inventories, then here in this page in the inventories tab, you will see the all of the list of the inventories that you have created within your country. So right now I am showing a test version of the tool so you can see that there are there are many inventories that have already been created so so this is the inventory that i have prepared for the year 2024 this is the version name that i have so xyz would be my iso party code so if it's for germany then it would be deu crt 2024 and the version every version number is a unique version number and this is a starter state and it also gives you an information on when it was created, when it was updated, and then if this information would be used for the for the NDC in reporting the NDC progress. And here in the header, so you have the inventories where you will see all of the inventories here, then the data entry where you'll be doing the data entry, and then reporting tables tab would help you to generate the reporting tables, and the QQC tab would have a different quality checks. But so far we have implemented a key category analysis that you will be able to access here. And then this JSON validator would help you to validate the JSON file before importing. And now I'll open this version that I have already created. So in this page, you can also sort based on the year for which you are preparing the inventory, or you can also um, select the status of your inventory. So for now, I'll open this version 2024. So my version is being now open. So you can see here that the version number is always displayed. When whenever you open the version, the version number is always displayed for you so that you know in which version you are working. And then it also gives an information on who are the users that, that are accessing the tool, this version right now. So right now I am the only one who is accessing. And then it shows the status of your data synchronization so that you you can see that when the data is saved and then this is, I'm working on online mode. So you can see this is the online indicator. And on the left hand side of the screen, so you will see the navigation tree uh, based on the agreed common reporting table. So you can expand and collapse this navigation tree and then you can add or um, customize the navigation tree for reporting the different categories within your country. So you can see here that you can customize the category tree and then you can also see like there are each of the sectors have its has its own category tree. So energy, industrial process, agriculture, LULUCF, waste, and others. So you can expand the category trees for each sector. And then you can also customize the category tree in each sector. And then on the right hand side of the screen, so you have the data entry grids where you'll be entering the data. So let me quickly show you one data entry grids with the different colored cells. So right now I'm in a gaseous fuel. So in the gaseous fuel, so I, I provide the information on a different information for the different uh, parameters of so fuel consumption is activity data. Then I provide information on the method, emission factor, emissions, and the implied emission factor. It is automatically calculated based on that number that I have entered here. So the, the tool, automatically does the calculation. So I have entered the activity data. Then I have entered the emissions. And then you can see here that the implant emission factor is automatically calculated in the green cells. So you enter the data in white cells, the green cells is automatically calculated. And this information is aggregated upwards to arrive at the national total. And you can see here that each year of the time series are displayed here on the right hand side. So you can see every year that you want to report are organized in the column format. So you can enter the data in a time series format. And once you are done with entering all of the data, then you can see that your your national total or your sector total and the national total is calculated in these green cells. Before this trading, I had already entered, I was working on this inventory for the, for the testing. So you can see 
a large amount of data has was already populated in this in this in this tool so you can see all of these my national total and the GHG emissions have been calculated for each year in the time series so all of the years has been populated and once i compile all of my data then i can go to the reporting tables tab and then here i would be able to generate the common reporting table so you can select the years for which you want to generate the reporting tables so for now i will not select all the years so i'll just select the two three years for generating the reporting tables then you can select for which sector you want to generate the reporting tables or you can also select the each of the reporting tables so for now let me select all of the sectors and then all of the tables are automatically selected for me then i apply the filter then you can see here that the reporting tables for the three years are generated so i can download them as a individual file for each year in excel or i can download all of them at once in a, in a gif format so for now let me download only for 1990 so while i wait wait for wait it for for it to download and in in the, this view kind of gives you the cost option to customize all of the all of the filters so you, so all of the common reporting tables that are agreed in the crt are listed here so that you can select one or more tables to to download Since I'm using the test version, so it might be a bit slow since we are also continuously testing to prepare it for the for the release uh, next week, uh, the final version of the tool. So the application is, since it's a test version, the application is a bit slow. So let me wait. So it will be downloaded in a, in a few seconds. So in the meantime, uh, let me quickly switch the browser. So I'm still in the same version, version 0 0.4 of the tool. So I was downloading the the inventories. So now my file is is downloaded so I can I so this is the reporting tables the common reporting tables and as you can see here so all of the data that I had entered in the application that you saw a while ago in the application these data are now mapped into the into the reporting tables so you can see here that the reporting tables is generated for for the year 1990 and I didn't have um, data entered in the IPP sector, so these tables are blank, but for the agriculture sector and others, like you can see that the reporting tables have been filled with the data. So in this way, 
the tools helps you to generate the reporting tables once you once you enter your data into the into the application and i i think for for today there's just one more thing that i wanted to show to you which is about the version setting where you will be able to select the flexibility provisions so the developing country parties can use the flexibility in light of their national capacity so in the version setting you will be able to select the different flexibility provision that you may want to apply so there are there are eight flexibility provisions i think that was covered in the presentation by fernando earlier earlier today so you can select each of these flexibility provision in the tool and you can also specify which of the flexibility provisions that you want to apply so so here if you want to select some years for reporting you can select the years here and it will be reflected accordingly in the time series so this is all about how you can apply the flexibility provisions and then other there are for each sector there are some settings that you need to specify in the beginning uh, so today i will not be showing all of this but next week in the training like we'll be going step wise to create a version and then to compile the data and then generate the reporting table so we'll take each of these uh, demo that i showed so today we'll be working on each of them as a in a form of exercise in a much more elaborative manner so i think with this i will close my presentation here so that's all i have for today and then if there are any questions that you may have i'm happy to take them thank you sila over to you yeah, thank you so much for that elaborate uh, demonstration and elaboration on the most key elements of the tools. So there is still an opportunity for participants to ask questions. Kindly ask any question you would like to ask. But in the chat, I saw a question about uh, how shall we come with the data, which data will we need to come with. So I'm um, I'm just requesting that you can also ask if you have another question. But uh, our next presentation, of course, will be uh, more on guiding data requirements for that for the training. So uh, if we do not have any other question, I would like to go into that session where Fernando is guiding us on the data requirements. But also you heard from the presentation that we are requesting that it would be very important for you to carry your laptops along with you um yes because i had had those questions in my inbox now you have confirmed that you need to carry at least a laptop so you can this is a working session so it will, it is very important so i'll take this opportunity to hand over to fernando uh, for the guiding uh, steps on how our uh, data requirements for the training if we don't have any questions. Fernando, the floor is yours. Hello, Fernando, are you there? <laughs> Can see where you are taking one? Okay. Okay, so... Uh... I, I have. OK. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, the, the, an initial point I would like to uh, stress is that um, we will have uh, three days of activities with exercises, uh, with using uh, software. So, um, <clears throat> Basically, what we will do is trying to, to get very deep into the, the components of the MPGs in the terms of the uh, 
in the terms of the national GAG uh, inventory. So you can have the opportunity to prepare uh, in a very good way for the submission of the first uh, BTR. So uh, in this case, we are using uh, real materials. We are making uh, examples using uh, BTRs that are already published. We, are, we will uh, hopefully use also the information that you will bring and, and I'll give you uh, more information on, on this. And, and regarding the, um, the work that you will, day, you will do on day three uh, with the uh, UNFCCC reporting software, um, according to the previous uh, trainings we had, uh, there is no need that you bring um, new, uh, your own ma material uh, of course, it's, it's very welcome if you have some information from your inventory, but the UNFCCC uh, people is, uh, already has some exercises that uh, are based on, on data that is a bit more general. So uh, in the case of day three, uh, it won't be needed that you uh, bring uh, any special uh, materials. We will also uh, ha uh, will have a, a number of uh, activities involving the uh, learning about the experiences from countries. Uh, so we'll have also you the opportunity to, to learn and to exchange information on what other countries are advancing in preparing their uh, BTRs. And I think this is a very, uh, uh, very useful and, and a very good opportunity also to have this uh, in-person training that you, uh, we, you will have the opportunity to interact in a much more fluid uh, uh, process than uh, in this webinar. This webinar is mostly uh, in order for you to warm up and to learn what is going to happen, but it doesn't replace what you will have in three full days of work. And, and at last but not least, as uh, can see we mentioned, uh, we are interested to, to learn uh, what are the materials that you have already prepared and if we can give you some advice uh, on this, I think it will be uh, useful for your uh, future BTR. Regarding the, the exercises with the, the tables presented in detail by uh, Ketsiwe, these uh, common reporting tables, the idea is for you to have a familiarity with the with the software, and that will be uh, done uh, by in day three. But also we, we understand what is important that you also are familiar with what is uh, inside the software, know what, what's in the tables, how the tables are related, how, we, how probably if you only work on the inventory, you don't know that the, the NDC tracking relies a lot in the information from inventories and we will have a session for you to, uh, to learn the, the, the connections between the information of the inventory and the connection from, for the chapter of uh, NDC tracking. This is an example of things that we will go m through more in detail. Uh, the MPGs now uh, introduced uh, into the reporting a number of elements called the GAG Inventory Management Tools by the IPCC. So the IPCC defines this uh, inventory management tools and the UNFCCC uh, convention has uh, uh, selected to include um, several of them into the uh, reporting of the BTR. So we will go through them uh, with practical exercises. We will conduct uh, uh, during day one and day two exercises with real data mostly to, for instance, for you to have better improvement plans or work plans or, or data management system or system for doing the QA, QC of the data you, you have uh, available in your inventory. So this is just to, to, to show you the, the type of exercises that we will conduct. Regarding the um, information we require, require from you, 
you can uh, see this slide with the information uh, uh, country by country. So uh, I, uh, I request uh, Sheila to distribute this table for uh, the different teams of the countries can fill and indicate uh, if they have a, a final version of, for instance, the QAQC plan, of the improvement plan, or if they already published it, or if they are preparing. Uh, it's, this is information is very useful for us in order to know in which stage of the process of fulfilling all the requirements of the MPGs in the case of the inventory. So, so uh, the more information we have, the more information we can share, I think the better it is for everyone in terms of the, the training we will have next week. And, and uh, uh, in addition, uh, we will have two sessions um, with information uh, more uh, specific both in the energy sector and in the LULUCF sector. And in the case of the energy sectors, we will conduct some uh, exercises uh, with data from the energy balance. So uh, if you have your energy balance uh, available and you can bring it uh, as a file to the um, training next week, that would be uh, very much appreciated. I think this is uh, an end to my presentation and going back to you again, uh, Sheila. We shall definitely share. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will write an email specifically on the information requirements and also provide that table to you so that uh, you can be able to fill it uh, maybe we can agree in this meeting, it would be nice if we receive the table before the training so we know that at least we have enough information uh, from, the, from the participants. So I will maybe put a deadline of Friday. I don't know. I will put a deadline of Thursday. I know today is a Tuesday so that uh, because we have an opportunity for only Monday, so that I can give another reminder on Friday. I hope that is fair because I disturb you a lot with my emails. Yeah, before maybe we go for another session, I would like to request participants to turn on their camera so we can have um, a photo moment so that when we get to Chigali, we can already be knowing, be familiar with some faces. Kindly switch on your cameras. And please, if you have not yet uh, uh, subscribed to our platform, kindly subscribe and register to our platform so that you can be able to access all these materials. Just in case you get any challenges in registration, you can always uh, write to me uh, so that you can have access. Because most of all the materials that we are presenting here, we upload them on the climate transparency platform. So I'm going to take the first photo. I hope we shall have smiles. So this is the first one. I'll take a, a, a second one. Thank you. Uh, so if we don't have any questions on points of clarifications from the participants, I will request that you go for the next session, uh, which is uh, about the Mentimeter. I would like to know. Yeah, I can see a hand maybe before that. Yeah. I hope I read your name very well. Uh, Shamano. Kindly unmute yourself and speak. 
All right, thank you, Sheila. Uh, yes, it's Chaman, you are correct. Uh, just one question regarding the, the data that's requested by Thursday or Friday. So if there are two delegates or delegations from the same country, do you need both of us to submit the data or we can just submit one data for South Africa? Thank you. Yes, uh, data is representation of the country, so you can work together. I hope you already know yourselves, those who are coming from the same country. I hope so, because you are nominated by the focal point, so you should be able to work together so you submit the same data sets. In fact, when I'm writing, I would I will be expecting both uh, colleagues from the same country to work together to submit. I think colleagues, that is fair because we need data for the country, not really as individuals. Yeah. Okay, so if we don't have any other question. In, in addition. Yeah. Um, yes, please. Sheila, thank you. Uh, maybe it can be good that you comment that uh, we will have a, a Google Drive for uh, putting information. Uh, I, I, I saw in the chat that some people is asking for the presentations or training materials. We will exchange all this information through this uh, uh, Google Drive and uh, you were the creator. So probably if people want to access, they will have to require your permission. Yes, I, I will open the Google Drive to the trainers so they will have access to, to to that data and information. But I think that one will be very open. I don't know if I can be guided during the the training, but at the moment, like the training materials, the presentations for today will all be on the platform. Then uh the Google Drive will be um will be shared in the first day of the workshop. the plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to share the Mentimeter. I will request you to open your Menti so that we are able to get your feedback about this uh, webinar. It's very important for us on the future trainings that we are organizing so that you can uh, organize better. So I'm going to be sharing the my screen and then I will also go ahead and share the webinar code in the chat. I hope you can see my screen. But the code can also be accessed in the chat. So the mint is already
Yeah. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes, oh, Sheila, we yes. can hear you now. Yes. I don't know what happened to my internet. I saw my main to go off and I was seeing that I have internet. Sorry about that, but I know you already have the code for the mentee, so you could still go ahead and and fill the the survey because it's open as long as you have the code. I'm going to reshare it again. Apologies about that. So I can I can share my screen again for the next questions. Yeah, thank you so much. I can see you have uh, given us feedback. Uh, the code is one five seven nine zero three seven seven. We were about thirty two people, so I would expect that we all try to be on menti the next question is of course how relevant was this training for your work i can see that most of us who are coming for this training uh this training is important thank you and then how can we improve is our next question and uh, thank you for this feedback uh, i can see over 15 responses you are saying that more interaction to avoid repeating. I can see maybe this is French. <laughs> More demos and practicals. Of course, that's why we have this training as an in-country hands-on training, uh, because we understand that it's more practical to and uh, it's more practical than just presentations. And then, of course, uh, giving more time to speakers would mean that we take more hours on the webinar. I hope uh, during the uh, hands-on training we shall have more time for the different sessions i can see more time is is one of the feedback thank you for this uh, feedback yes i will be sharing guidance on the data needs in the shortly after the webinar yeah thank you uh the next question was about how can we improve yes so the next question was uh, do you have any other comments you would like to share okay looking forward yes we are also looking forward to seeing you meeting new people that you have not seen before uh thank you so much uh, for joining this webinar and apologies where we had some uh hitches here and there but we hope uh, that it was beneficial so our last the last part of this session uh is um uh, about maybe giving more guidance on the Chigali training. And of course, some of, of, of you have already received the logistic note. Uh, I hope you take time to read it and get more references on the hotels and other elements because each one of us is supposed to organize their own accommodation. Uh, there is no booking for anyone. So kindly take note of that to book your own accommodation. And of course, would request you book accommodation closer to the training center so that we can all be in time. So I will not now talk much. I will hand over the another closing session to my colleague, Rebecca, uh, from Patpa, whom we have been co-organizing all this together. So Rebecca, the microphone is open for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheila, and thank you for taking us through that last Mentimeter. And yeah, just to close off the webinar, we quickly wanted to uh, give you an overview of who will be attending the meeting and some last practical information. I hope you can see my screen. So just for you to know who will be the team in Kigali, who will be the experts coming to Kigali. So that will be Fatima Zara Taibi, Fernando, Kitsiwe and Sheila, who you've all uh, seen today coming from CBIT GSP. And then we have um, Sekai Ingarize coming as an expect uh, as an expert for the Lulu CF 
and we have Nasheep with us who presented today, as well as our moderator Elizabeth, as well as myself from Patba. So just to give you um, some faces who's behind the organization uh, and who can you expect to see in Kigali. And with that, um, I have one last slide remaining, remaining with some last practical information, which I think we heard before, but nonetheless, it's good to remind ourselves. So please, once more, the um, reminder to bring your own equipment, so your own laptop. You heard it before, it will be needed for the sessions. Um, so please ensure that you have those packed in your luggages. Um, then the agenda, we've heard a little bit about it from Fernando. That will be shared by us by the end of the week. Another important information for you is that the Francophone group will have their training in parallel in the um, in the in the convention center. So it's also an opportunity for you to exchange with them during some informal sessions if you would like. Then, as Sheila has noted, the logistical note has been shared. But if you do have any questions, please reach out to Sheila or myself, um, and we're happy to answer those. And last but not least, but please watch out for um, any emails that are coming from the organizers in these days. Um, as said, Sheila will be sending something um, regarding the data requirements that you requested uh, to and the work that you requested to done uh, to do upfront to ensure that the that the training can be as fruitful as possible. So those are the last practical informations we have for you. Um, and with that, I think it just remains time to say thank you very much to all the presenters today and thank you for all the attendees. Thank you for taking the time to be here today. Um, and yes, if you have any questions, reach out to us. Um, thank you very much. With that, I say bye. <laughs> Yes, you can unmute, put your camera and say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.